I was a reporter in Alpha City, a city full of superheroes and a universe full of miracles. I watched my city, told the stories that happened there, even watched the world end there. I saw realities appear and vanish over and over again until my world, my city, somehow returned. I can't interact with this world, but I can still watch my city, still tell its stories. My name is Craig Allen, and this is Alpha City News. The alley is narrow and crowded with garbage bins and uncollected trash. The ripe air is full of sounds, sirens and car alarms, shouts of surprise, people running. One pair of footfalls grows louder, echoing off the brick walls, and a young girl appears from behind a green dumpster, feet pounding on the damp concrete, hurtling towards the far opening of the alley. Simone is twelve years old, and she's running as hard and as fast as she can. She loves to run, likes school well enough, and idolizes superheroes. She was five when Radiant first appeared in Alpha City, and she still feels the same sense of wonder about the heroes that she did the first time she saw Radiant on television. Simone is running as hard as she can today, though, because she's hoping to catch one more look at her favorite hero, Jackie Quick, the world's fastest human. Simone was walking home from school when she saw Jackie Quick and a man in a strange metal suit fighting in the intersection ahead of her. She froze at first because, strangely enough, it had never occurred to Simone that Jackie Quick, or any other hero for that matter, was real. She'd spent hours with her friends arguing over which of their favorites was the fastest, the strongest, the best. She collected the comics and clipped articles, and begged her parents to be able to watch anything about the heroes that came on TV. But this was the first time Simone had seen a superhero with her own eyes. She stood, rooted to the pavement, halfway between her school and the subway station where the train she took stopped every day, watching with round eyes the spectacle of a man, obviously a bad man, hovering a few feet off the ground and trying to shoot a fast-moving blue blur, which occasionally resolved itself into the blonde form of the Queen of Speed. Almost too fast to follow, Jackie Quick ricocheted back and forth around the strange man, bouncing from car to wall to lamppost, and finally using her momentum to leap into the air and knock the villain out of the intersection. The blue man flew down the street, still rising as he vanished behind a building, disappearing from Simone's sight. Jackie Quick, living up to her name, raced in pursuit. And without conscious thought, Simone also began to run. She shot across the street, not looking to see if it was safe to cross. If her mother had been there, she would have had a heart attack, then had more than a few sharp words for her daughter, and entered an alley, moving parallel to the direction the blue man had been thrown. Any thought that being close enough to witness the altercation might be dangerous for a young girl was drowned out by a single sentence which boomed through her mind. I gotta see what happens, I gotta see what happens, I gotta see what happens, I gotta see! By the time Simone reached the end of the alley, her breath burning in her throat and pulse pounding in her head, the man in the blue metal suit had regained his composure and had begun firing wildly without regard to nearby civilians. Jackie Quick had her hands full, trying to protect them. The bad man, the one in the blue suit, is unfamiliar to Simone, and even to Jackie Quick. His name is Lyman Swan, though in his addled mind he refers to himself as the Chromium Swan. He is the youngest son of famed lawyers Rodney and Alice Swan, brother to rising legal star Sinjin Swan, and was formerly an associate at Swan, Swan, Hummingbird, and Swan, the law firm his grandfather founded where Lyman's father, mother, and brother are all partners. Lyman had recently been disbarred, fired, and disowned for the latest in a string of illegal actions on his part, and in his not-quite-sound estimation, this is the fault of his family, being that their prodigious talents made his own look positively meager. His solution had been to seek out the counsel of a shady contact, who had, through a string of connections, put Lyman Swan in touch with a technical genius, 
one who had found that creating weapons and armor for other people made more money than making and using such things on his own could, and with the added benefit of keeping him mostly off the radar of both police and costumed heroes. In short order, Lyman Swan found himself quite a bit poorer, but in possession of a metal suit of cool blue color, which allowed him to fly, withstand the impact of bullets, and fire energy beams from wrist-mounted blasters, which he found delightfully destructive. Christening himself the Chromium Swan, Lyman had set out on the day Simone first saw her favorite heroine in the real world to destroy his parents, his brother, their law firm, and anyone else he might take a mind to. After blowing a hole in the roof of the brownstone in which he lived, for the time being, anyway, it was owned by his family, and eviction was no doubt coming quickly. The chromium swan had advanced less than two blocks before his penchant for playfully firing on traffic had drawn Jackie Quick's attention. The fact that no one had yet been killed is a glowing testament to Miss Quick's skill at her calling. Simone, eyes locked onto the melee in the intersection, kept moving forward until only one car separated her from the combatants. She watched, entranced, as Jackie Quick shot around the battleground, racing to keep ahead of the Chromium Swan's energy blasts, moving civilians out of the way, extricating them from cars that moments later were cut in half, and trying to keep the panicked away from the danger zone. This regard for innocent life is what finally allowed the Chromium Swan to get the drop on his adversary. Jackie Quick, attempting to deflect one of the Swan's blasts with a loose car door, found herself thrown against a storefront, striking her head and rebounding, confused, into the street in front of the lawyer turned super criminal. Simone, watching the scene in disbelief, experienced something entirely new to her. It was a mixture of disorientation and perfect clarity, in which she felt separated from herself and at the same time acutely aware of everything in her field of vision. Simone could see that she, the Chromium Swan, and Jackie Quick formed an almost straight line running diagonally across the intersection. Simone could see Jackie Quick already recovering but still confused on her hands and knees. Simone could see the Chromium Swan facing away from her, floating in the air between herself and the hero, lining up a final shot with his energy gauntlets. Simone could see that Jackie Quick fast as she was, simply would not be able to clear the swan's line of fire before being struck by his next blast. Simone saw that the coupling connecting the blaster that the swan was about to fire was linked to the power pack on his back by a loose coupling. Lastly, most importantly, Simone felt a chunk of rubble under her right hand. Without conscious thought, Simone gripped the chunk of rubble and in one fluid motion stood up, twisted her torso, and brought her arm up and over, releasing the half-brick from her hand at the exact spot in her throw that would send it on a path to strike the coupling on the swan's back with the perfect amount of force. Brick met metal just as the swan began to fire, breaking the coupling loose. The swan did manage to hit Jackie with a small amount of energy, stunning her again, but the disconnection of the coupling played havoc with the power system of the swan's suit. Had he simply powered it down, the coming overload might have been averted, but the swan, spun around by the energy erupting from his power pack, caught sight of Simone. It's doubtful he knew that she was the cause of his failure, but the look of happiness he spied on her face at his downfall was enough to arrange him. The swan raised his still-working gauntlet and took aim at Simone. Simone, suddenly terrified, simply watched as the energy blaster came online with her young form and fired. Jackie Quick, mostly recovered, realized what was about to occur and began to move towards the young girl. The swan fired, and his power pack exploded. Something shot out of the exploding pack much faster than it should have. The small, oddly-shaped object flew towards me, and I caught it. It was the first solid object I had been able to touch since my world ended. I watch and move, 
but I can't interact, except for this object, which I could touch. It was very heavy for something of its apparent size, made of a substance that looked like metal and stone and fire all at once, and curved around onto itself in an eye-watering fashion. And the moment it touched my hand, the world changed again. The entire world flickered and seemed to keep flickering. And in the tableau in front of me, the flickering resolved itself into four different scenes, all happening at once, each as real as the others, none of which could happen if any other one of them did. The swan died as his power pack exploded, but his last blast caught Simone in the chest an instant before Jackie Quick could reach her, throwing Simone's dead body against the wall behind it. At the same time, though, in the same place, the swan died as his power pack exploded, and Jackie Quick, realizing that she could not reach Simone in time to save her, throws herself between the girl and the deadly beam, taking the full force of it on herself. The last thing Jackie Quick hears as she dies is Simone's voice, apologizing over and over again. At the same time, though, in the same place, the swan is gravely wounded as his power pack explodes, and Simone regains the expanded worldview which allowed her to save Jackie Quick with enough time to realize that should she simply go limp and fall over, she will avoid being struck by most of the energy directed towards her. Jackie Quick finds the girl lying on her back, eyes open and full of wonder brought on by seeing the world in a new way. Simone has discovered her own superpower, an ability to read the world around her with a clarity and speed that gives her an edge over any adversary. Simone, calling herself Kid Quick, becomes Jackie Quick's sidekick and eventual successor. At the same time, though, in the same place, Jackie throws herself in front of the beam as Simone goes limp and falls, but the beam strikes neither. The beam and the explosion of the power pack are contained and removed by a new figure. A large man with young eyes, the being known as Empyrean, appears for the first time, using his energy control abilities to help Jackie Quick save Simone and the Swan. Jackie greets the new hero with thanks for his assistance, and Simone appears on the front page of the Alpha Citizen, shaking hands with the new hero. She discovers later that her expanded awareness was not a fluke, and eventually becomes a hero under the name of Calculus. All of these things happen. All are equally real, and none can happen while the others do. Simone is alive and dead. Jackie Quick is alive and dead. The Chromium Swan is alive and dead. The flickering in my vision grows randomly, fades randomly with different visions overlapping one another. In trying to make sense of what I'm seeing, I float upwards, high enough to observe the entire city. The flickering extends as far as I can see. Through the kaleidoscope effect, Alpha City shifts and changes, here being a vast metropolis of tall crystal spires, here a small western city, here appearing to be from the early part of the 20th century, here looking like it's from the far future, here looking like magic holds sway rather than science. It looks for all the world as though Alpha City's very reality is boiling, bringing up different aspects, different possibilities out of nothing, then allowing them to sink back and replacing them with something new. I realize I was wrong. Alpha City didn't return. Not really. The idea is here. The underlying shape of a city that should have existed in the past and present and future, but it floats on a, the skin of bubbling chaos. And I feel for the first time as though I am well and truly lost and can never be found. The shifting of my city threatens to break my mind, and I cannot watch her anymore. 
I cover my eyes in terror and in sorrow, and when I do, I feel the weight of the object in my hand, the one which had been powering the chromium swan, and which contact with had shredded my illusion about the nature of my city. I open my hand and look at its surface of fire, of wood, of metal, twisting out of sight and back into sight again, into and out of itself, and it tells me to look, to look there. And there I see what will save me and save the entire universe. I see Lindy, Lindy Johnston, intrepid reporter for Alpha City News, my girlfriend, appears in the distance. She's the only thing I can see which looks at all real, and when she comes close enough, I can see that she is holding something, which looks much like the object I'm holding. Lindy holds up her object for me to see, and smiles, and runs toward me.